demonstration of his kingdom. Hallelujah. He wanted to demonstrate the kingdom of God, the power of God, by using the healing. Hallelujah. But to receive that healing, we need to remove this strict hindrance in our life. So when I was praying to God and I was preparing, God spoke to me and said that some of us friends are here under three of these points. And because of this, you are not. I'm not getting healing from God. Hallelujah. I believe that God is going to heal you tonight. If you remove those injuries from your life, in my life, hallelujah. The first point, unconfessed. Bible says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Hallelujah. Let's go up. James chapter 5 verse 16. James chapter 5 verse 16 says, Until or unless we are not confessed what we have did law, we are not going to heal the sickness that we are having in our life. Hallelujah. That's why God says, Until or unless we are not confessed with one another, it's difficult to heal your sickness, my sickness. I didn't see what you have done, but God knows. God says what you did wrong, and you are trying to hide that sin. You are afraid to confess the sin, and because of that, you are not able to heal from your sickness. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! If I speak the English, my phone will not give. Ah. Ah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the first hindrance to heal our sinners is we need to confess the sin that we have did in the sight of God. I know some of you are sitting here in this line. Okay? Some of you are here in this line. You have did something wrong in the sight of God, you are hiding. And because of that, you are having a problem in your body. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! God says, this is the night that you confess if you want to receive the healing from God. Number two, unforgiveness. Number two, unforgiveness. Jesus says that unforgiveness stands in the way of prayer. Seek reconciliation with the offender, the word of God says. Until unless you cannot forgive to your brothers or sisters or your friends, that will be a big burden for you. And because of that, what happens? Sickness comes in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Who is it? No sleep, no. Praise the Lord. No person will be like that. You are afraid to say praise the Lord? No, no. Because I say praise the Lord because it is in the word of God. That's why I say praise the Lord. Why? Hallelujah. So as I say the first, some of you, tonight, you need to confess in the presence of God. Don't confess to me, but confess to God. Hallelujah. Number two, unforgiveness. I never want us to forgive to your friends, to your parents, or with your relatives, the sin that makes you sickness, in that sickness is a very heavy for you, and you are carrying that one for so many years. Hallelujah! The sin is carrying you for so many years, and you are trying to come out from there by yourself, myself. But tonight God says, it is not by you, it is not by your strength, but you have to come to me. Hallelujah. You need to come to me. Number three. Number three. Failure to ask God for healing. When I say failure to ask him, 
most of time, I'm not against you know, about the doctors. God has given a doctor's medicine to us. But I know, and I know some of the people, you know, and this is going to and ask God to try to put up the mantir, even the Christian. They go to the people who do the magic. They go and ask him. No? But tonight, I'm here in your midst. The word of God says, I'm here in your midst. Whoever called me, I will come and I will dwell in that person. When that person comes and dwells in us, everything will be clean. All the sickness will be no more. Hallelujah. When you see the king Asa, he had so many prophets and priests. So he never asked God to heal his sickness. He was depending on the prophets and the praise. That's why his sickness was not healed. Don't depend with your strength.